$168 million. The government, they could do a lot with $168 million. It could hire a thousand teachers, a thousand nurses, fund a cardiac cath lab in Red Deer, and pay for a few schools to boot. But this government is seriously thinking about spending $168 million or possibly more to create a brand new government bureaucracy to sell cannabis. To the Premier, will you commit here and now to not establish an expensive, inefficient government retail model that would all but guarantee the black market would continue to thrive? The Honourable Premier. Well, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. You know, there are a number of very complicated issues that uh, our minister uh, is working through uh, very, very uh, furiously uh, to get resolved as it relates to implementing the uh, directive of the federal government around cannabis. There are a number of complex issues and there are a number of consequences to each of those decisions. So she is working very hard and she's working very hard to ensure that we meet the following principles, that we kill the black market or reduce the black market as much as we can and that we keep people safe and that we keep people's health and safety uh, uppermost. So with that in mind, we are deliberating on how to do that best and we'll Thank have you, more. Premier. Thank you, Madam Premier. First supplemental. If safety is important, you'll go with the private model because the AGLC reports 98% compliance for private liquor distribution. One of the four objectives, as you say, is to eliminate the black market, but most recently, one of your MLAs has speculated that you may be considering a franchise model. Aside from this not being one of the two models contemplated on your cannabis framework website, there is significant risk that an inflexible retail model wouldn't meet consumer demand, allowing the black market to thrive. Again to the Premier, is your government actually considering a franchise system, or is it just unauthorized speculation from an MLA? The Honourable Minister of Justice and Solicitor General. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm very proud of the work we've done around cannabis, of, in, of the uh, consultation that we've gone out with, not once but twice, to ensure that we're talking to Albertans, that we're getting to all perspectives. We've had over 80 meetings with different stakeholders and different groups uh, with different perspectives on things, and so we're going to take that all into account and we're going to make decisions and we're not going to engage in wild speculation. Second supplemental. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now, if the government does do the right thing and allow Alberta entrepreneurs to operate cannabis retail shops, another important question is who will be allowed to invest? There are potential benefits to allowing vertical integration, which is not part of Alberta's liquor retailing system. Cannabis producers understand the security considerations and they understand the market. Again, to the Premier, if you do allow private investment in retail cannabis, have you given consideration to allowing producers to open and operate retail stores? The Honourable Minister of Justice. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And as I've said, we've heard a lot of different perspectives from across Alberta. Uh, we do certainly understand that Albertans support our main values, which are to ensure uh, that we are getting the black market out and to ensure that we are keeping the health and safety of, of children and of our roads and of our workplaces forefront of mind, Mr. Speaker. We intend to do exactly that as we work forward. Um, obviously, we've done a lot of thinking about this and a lot of modeling and a lot of conversations, but Mr. Speaker, this is not the time for wild speculation. This is a very important issue. 